Hey folks, it's Ike with Big Techs here today with Chris from Blue Force Gear, and we're talking about their grid belt that they have. Chris, thank you for coming down. Look, really looking forward to this. Hey, I really appreciate you letting me be here today. Like what you guys do here at BTO is absolutely the standard in the industry. So thanks for letting us be a part of it today. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about grid belt. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Enjoy. <laughs> So Blue Force Gear initially did the chalk belt, which is fantastic. Very purpose-built belt for helicopter operations. As soon as we released it, of course, all the other people in you know our world that don't play around in helicopters were like, can you, we love the belt, it's awesome, but can you do one without all the load-bearing components to it? So we did it. And this is called the grid belt. Grid belt has some really interesting and functional features that are not to be found pretty much in anybody else's current tactical belt line. I'm sure that will change in the future, but currently this is the only one that has some of the things I'm about to talk about. A buckle that comes on the grid belt because it doesn't need to be load bearing is a directional snap type buckle, which I kind of dig because it's super low profile. I don't know if you see that from the side, so you don't get a bunch of form factor up here with a, like a giant, you know, cobra buckle or something like that. To, to use it though, it is a little bit different than everything else. The way it locks into the belt is put your thumb on this thing and pop it forward, almost you know like a pull the dot fastener. If anybody was a jump master, you know pull the dot fasteners are a thing. This functions the same way, and it gives us very low form factor while it's doing it, and we love all that. It is an inner outer belt system. The thing about grid belt that currently is a one-off is the fact that it is a contoured belt, which probably doesn't show up here on camera too well, but for all of us older people that have been wearing guns for a long time, if you remember how amazing like the older two inch leather gunfighter belts were, they were they all had something in common is that they're all a curved belt, they're contoured, i.e. if you lay it on this table right here and lay it out, it's not a straight cut belt. And that's why those belts were so friggin' comfortable hanging, you know, heavier pistols off of them and you can wear them all day and not get like hot spots on your hips and belt shelf and things like that. So the challenge to our designers was, hey, we want a tactical, you know, belt, molly, whole nine yards, but it has to be contoured. And, you know, to me, who's not an engineer or a designer, I didn't see what the big deal was, but apparently that was kind of a big deal because the, the belt is contoured, but all, all, all the molly cuts in it are all straight. The, the belt is contoured in two dimensions, actually. One is this way. So as you can kind of see, it's not a straight belt. And then the other contour is actually from top to bottom. So if you notice, it kind of flares out a little bit. And that is also by design, because if this is rigid and straight up and down is where, you know, those of us that don't have hips, it just burns right into your hips right there with those really rigid, really straight belts. So this is very rigid, really rigid, but it is contoured. So, you know, that gives it the comfort factor of hanging 15 pounds off this belt with all of your stuff, being able to have it on all day, and it, it's still really comfortable. This is our, our Molly Minus technology. So super rigid, super light. That was another thing we wanted because we're Blue Force gear and we're maniacal about cutting weight and cutting form factor off everything that we do. This, this thing doesn't weigh anything because of all the gear with today's technology Sorry guys, but the gear is getting heavier. And by gear, I mean guns, ammo, optics, you know, all, all of the accoutrements I need to wear on my belt. If you're a, a patrol cop and you're running, well, you guys know that uh, you're running a belt that is probably somewhere between 11 and 16 pounds. So how do we reduce that weight? Well, we, we need to start with the actual belt itself. So the fact that this thing just weighs a couple of ounces and is super comfortable is a big performance enhancement. The inner belt, obviously also contoured, a little bit of a pad in here, so that's nice. The buckle on the inner belt is a G-hook buckle that corresponds with a couple of loops that are here in the front of the inner belt. And that is to make sure it's got the lowest form factor possible. The sizing on these belts is kind of specific. You, you need to know your pants size, you need to know your belt size. It's not a small, medium, large proposition. And the reason it's not a small, medium, large proposition is because 
that means we have to put a bunch of extra material in there. The form factor, i.e. the size, starts getting pretty wonky. And we figured, you know, if we're gonna do an optimal belt, we need to do sizing right. So these belts are sized. And if you need to learn how to get your actual belt size, on our website, we have a great instructional video on how to get your waist size proper so that you can order the right size the first time. The inner belt, when you buy one, this is a 38. So on this inner belt right here, you see there's one, two, three, four, five actual G-hook catches built into the belt right there. So this one being a 38, that means 38 is actually the center catch. So I also get 36-ish if I go to the left, I get to about 40-ish coming this way. And that is because if you're in your bulking phase or your cutting phase uh, of your PT program, or you like had a giant you know, breakfast burrito for breakfast, or you know, you're wearing cold weather gear layers with your pants, then you, you get some decent adjustment on this inner belt. The same adjustment can be done on the outer belt with, with the pull tab. What we have here is basically probably the lightest, most rigid, and most comfortable tactical belt currently on the market. But wait, there's more. And that more is the directional snap buckle, although extremely low form factor and works extremely well, a lot of a lot of people, and I get it, I'm one of them, was like, hey, can we just put a cobra buckle on there so I can just snap it? And the answer is yes. And that comes in the form of the cobra buckle kit. So the chalk belt, if you look at this one, see these two holes right here in the front? Those holes are there actually so that you can loop pretty much any buckle system you want on this belt. We go with the, the Cobra buckle right here, and it comes in a kit of just the buckle pieces, a length of cut ultra comp, and then two, two screws to actually mount this, the female end to the end of the belt. And of course the male end just goes on the, on the uh, tensioner strap, and we're good to go. And then, voila, snap, snap. You can also run Fastex, probably a couple different buckle variations I haven't even played around with yet, but I know a, like one and a half inch Fastex works very well up here too, and it, it gives you that ability to kind of just put your belt on and go, and, and you're good to go. Super excited about the Cobra buckle kit. Depending on what you're doing with the belt and your you know thoughts on form factor and size and weight, you know, could definitely enhance the grid belt. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is because we did grid belt, what we do with belts first and foremost is hang guns off of them, so pistols. We did a holster hanger for the, the grid belt and chalk belt that is purpose built for these belts. And the requirement for the holster hanger was, I need to hang a, a gun off the side of my belt, but I don't want any interference of holster mounts to the hanger, hanger mounts to the belt, belt mounts to your body. And we want all of that to maintain form factor, function, and comfort. The actual holster hanger is contoured just like the belt, so it matches it. The hanger's also contoured to kick the gun out a little bit. Some other holster hangers that are straight, and you got you know decent sized quads, this holster and pistol start angling this way into your body, which kind of makes drawing the pistol you know, maybe not optimal. I was super stoked that when we did these, I got to beta test them. So I got to do about 10,000 draw strokes in different different angles and flows of this holster hanger. And we found what I think is kind of optimal to get, get that pistol to just fly out of the holster because it's sitting at a great angle against your body. Last thing on holster hanger, last requirement was when we mount it on the belt, we get full continuity of inner outer belt contact. On the outside of the holster hanger is this portion of the mounting hardware. On the inside is just these screw heads. So when we get our inner belt and outer belt to do business together, we don't get a real nasty threading effect or a big form factor right here that makes the interface of you, your inner belt, your outer belt, and the holster bulgy or nasty or anything like that. So trying to prevent that Han Solo belt. You guys all know what I'm talking about where your inner belt and your outer belt aren't doing business together because of your holster. That is grid belt, cobra buckle kit, and holster hanger that goes with either the grid belt or the chalk belt. Thanks a lot everybody for your time. Happy to be here at BTO and doing this type of stuff. It's just great. Thanks a lot.